Hey guys, and welcome to episode 9 of our weekly Super Smash Bros. Ultimate News Roundup, which means there's only 17 weeks left until the game is out. As usual, we're joined by Derek, Ash, and John to go over all the updates from the Smash Bros. blog and elsewhere from the past week. So let's get right to it. Alright guys, to start things off, I'm just going to throw it out there. This is going to be a weird-ass episode, <laughs> because <laughs> so much of what we're going to be talking about, we already covered, because pretty much every update this week relates to the Smash Direct. However, I think this will be a good opportunity for us to dive in a little bit deeper than we did before, since we've done so many analysis videos and general breakdowns since the Direct, that we can talk about all of this in a little bit more of an informed manner. So, we'll see what happens here. This might be a short episode, but knowing us, it might be longer than usual. Who knows? <laughs> Regardless, the week began uh, on Sunday, with day one, with a character overview of Samus, which is, of course, something that really wasn't focused on in the direct too much. Uh, the new description reads, With her charged shot, missile, and bomb, Samus has three different projectiles that keep her opponents in check from a distance. When fully charged, her charge shot is quite powerful. For her final smash, she launches a wide laser beam that can be moved up and down. Now, unfortunately, because of how busy we've been, I didn't have much time to do uh, too much research myself, but the Smash Brothers, um, or rather, but the Smash Wiki has a great breakdown of her, and they've proven it to be pretty accurate so far. And really, the main changes I've seen here, besides some visual ones, like with how her visor changed colors and firing missiles, which is neat, but the main thing seems to be the fact that they appear to have sped Samus up quite a bit, whether it's reducing leg on attacks or grabs, such as speeding up her jumps or even her roll dodge. Uh, and that speaks to me, because I think one of the reasons I've never been a big Samus fan is she's just been too slow. And that might still be the case, I'm not quite sure, but I never <laughs> found her that fun to use. I'm hoping that these uh, slight speed increases might help with the feel for her. But what do you guys think? Uh, how, how have you felt about Samus in general before and are looking forward to using her now? In previous games, Samus is always quite floaty. Mm -hmm. And um, especially in Smash for Wii U, she was very slow, very floaty, and as you just touched on, whenever you did her dodge roll, it would always take a very long time. Like half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah that's, that's not even an exaggeration, it takes half an hour. <laughs> but yeah, in, in Smash Ultimate, she's a lot faster. And um, actually, I think that's kind of a theme of Samus. She's far more agile in Smash Ultimate, so she can now charge her beam in the air, which is a huge advantage for the character, because that's always been quite a, a risky move. You always have to sort of be out of the way of your opponents to use that. And uh, it, it definitely changes the dynamics of Samus. But one thing I actually don't like about uh, this character is they're still using her other M design. And Samus's other M design is my least favorite. Uh, I think Samus is meant to sort of be a, a masculine kind of character on the outside. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely our most feminine design. It's very sleek, very thin. And I kind of wish they went for a, a Samus Returns design, which is far more bulky. Um, so I'm a bit let down in that regard. That's an interesting point. Well, and it's kind of interesting you say that too, because I, I'd always felt that, uh, like, with her role being so slow and her being so floaty, I kind of always felt that previous iterations of Samus and Smash had always leaned a little too heavily on Super Metroid physics. Just, her, she's so floaty. And mm -hmm. it would make more sense, in my opinion, well, the way she's been sped up reminds me more of, of Samus Returns, because she's a lot more agile and the physics are a lot less floaty in that game. So it would have been nice to see her design updated to reflect Samus Returns as well. But I see what you mean. It is still leaning very heavily on the other M design of her suit and such. But I am really happy with the buff she appears to be getting, because I'm with you, Andre. I could never use her, because her role took half an hour, like we already established. <laughs> and I'm just not great with floaty characters. I, I like being able to fast fall. I like having that really fine air movement, one reason I'm a big Mega Man main. And yeah, I just I, I really couldn't ever get down with that role. But now that it's faster, I definitely could see that yeah, I could see myself using her more often. Yeah, I, I've enjoyed using Samus in the past. I, I, she always struck me as a character you hang back with and shoot missiles and charge up your the charge beam and send that out and just hang back because I always had trouble whenever I got into the fray. And this, the fact that you can charge the charge shot in midair um, and just get around a lot faster, I think she might be a little better suited to getting into the fray much more so than before, at least with my playstyle, just how I treated her. So overall, I, li I like these changes. I think it's interesting to see her um, ha have that much greater mobility, and I don't know, I think it should be fun to check her out. I did not get to play her during the demo, so I didn't get to feel that extra speed, though. Did any of us get to play her? I played Samus quite a lot, actually, during the demo. Um, her, her speed um, b um, buffs actually add a lot to the character. And um, I actually won all of my matches with Samus. I didn't lose a single one. Um, and yeah, she just she feels very powerful, which is something that I think is kind of been missing with the character in other Smash games. Right. 
Um, I, yeah, again, on Samus Returns, I do wish they had some of her Aeon abilities. Kind of like, mm. there's, there's, there's some yeah. missed opportunities with the, um, the veteran characters. Like, Samus could have had so many new abilities from her re- most recent games. But she's still very grounded in, as Ash said, uh, Super Metroid. Um, even, like, even Metroid Zero Mission has very um, fast movement, whereas Super Metroid's kind of floaty in that regard. And there's still definitely that that leaning that um, it's definitely leaning, leaning more on Super Metroid in that regard, but still she definitely feels a lot more agile, a lot faster, and um, a lot more aggressive. And I've actually seen some people play Samus. Like some people have actually made a um, a league table for the characters already. <laughs> a lot of people are putting Samus <laughs> at the bottom. Um, I don't think I agree with that. I think she's one of the better ones that I've played as. I mean, I'm not a Samus main, so I'm sure there are... I mean, I've seen the way people use her bombs in, like, in incredible ways, and they have so much unique utility, but speaking as someone who doesn't main Samus, I think it would have been so cool if her bombs, her down special, had been replaced with her melee counter from oh, yeah. from Samus Returns. Although, to be mm. fair, on the other end of that, there are already a lot of characters who have counters as their down special, so that may have been too much. But still, mm. I, I just wish they... I'm with you, John. I wish they would have done something to update her moveset with something recent like even I mean even not like you said not just Samus Returns but anything else really like ice missiles from I think it's either Zero Mission or Fusion and there I don't know there's so many different things she could do and I just I, mean, I kind of wish that they'd update her moveset just a bit how would you feel about a taunt where she just yelled the baby over and over I, I would love be that. so down <laughs> completely no, I, 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 I other M design so why not <laughs> <laughs> yeah then why yeah sure no, I was just thinking they could have just changed her uh, side smash to unleash a barrage of en- of power like she does in um, Samus Returns, like that one Aeon ability where she like rapid fires stuff and just have a quick burst of that. Even that mm-hmm. would be something to uh, have something new for her moveset. So that could have been her new final smash. I mean, because the yeah. zero laser isn't actually, it's really cool, but it doesn't, in far, as far as I know, it doesn't really come from anything. So they could have just replaced that with you know, a similar, it could act the same way. It would just be a rapid fire barrage of power beam shots, like in her Aeon ability. I think that would have been really appropriate, actually. I was kind of thinking that her um, her standard special could be the Aeon rapid fire, because her charge attack also doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Because in all Metroid games with a charge um, fire, you can walk and you can move around, you can charge whenever you want. There's no reason to be stationary. <laughs> yeah. And they've kind of remedied that with her being able to charge in the air. But it still doesn't quite make as much sense as um, as it should. <laughs> I think it is worth noting that her that he uh, or that her grabs have all gotten reduced startup and in lag because along with her roll, her grabs were one of the worst parts of her entire oh, game. Yeah. Like they yeah. were you so miss your slow, trouble. like yeah. really, really horribly slow. So I'm really glad to see that that the mo- the parts of her character that most needed buffing seem to have been buffed. Do you remember the cheat code yeah. in in melee where you could extend her uh, grapple beam by like twice? I do. Yeah, (laughs) pretty great. (laughs) Moving on to day two, being Monday, we got a new item update for the bomber. The description reads, hold the bomber up with the A button and a massive explosion will occur in 1.5 seconds. You will take less damage by moving away from the center of the explosion, so if you're about to get caught in it, try to get away. Uh, now, the, scre- the um, description doesn't reveal that it's from Kirby, but the picture does have a picture of Kirby, so it kind of hints at the fact. And we also see it in action in the latest Direct, where we can see a character hold it up and it creates an explosion, uh, while the character who grabbed it is totally fine, which is a little bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, my first thought is, does Smash Brothers really need more explosions? <laughs> right. Yes. Aren't there enough already? <laughs> No, never, never. <laughs> yeah, everything needs more explosions. <laughs> exactly. Actually, I, I like this item a lot, actually. Um, yeah. it, ca- it caught me off guard so many times. Because um, when you have items on, when there's assist trophies and Pokeballs everywhere, there's a lot going on on the screen. And there were so many times where I didn't really notice that someone picked up the bomber. And um, there's just this, this moment of panic where you see them lift it above the head and you try to get away, but you just <laughs> can't quite make it. And it's, it's one of the more tense items in that demo. And... Um, I actually accidentally picked it up myself a couple of times without realizing, so you get a nice um, a few accidental KOs. But yeah, it's a very powerful item, and one that you can uh, accidentally lose sight of, so you have to pay attention at all times. But yeah, I, I, I am quite a big fan of this item. 
I like how it's a variation of the special flag from Wii U, where you know you, you had to hold it up for a certain amount of time and you got something special out of it, and everybody like that just made you a big target. For but with the bomber, yeah, you could rush in there and try to stop them, or you could just get the heck away. Like that's an interesting dynamic mm -hmm. where you got to sort of choose whether or not to actually fight the person holding the bomber. Uh, do you know if you throw the bomber, will it just activate on its own, or uh, will it just sort of bounce off and start walking again, John? I, I didn't I don't know if you can throw at it and actually yeah. I tried um yeah I tried I tried throwing it. I'm not I'm not actually sure if you have the ability to I think once you pick it up you just sort of hold it above your head yeah because I, I mean can, can you throw the special flag I can't remember now that I think of it I don't I, because I think why would you want hmm. to you know it's like yeah you, I guess you that's have a good it point. yeah so well actually no you can because you can pick it up and then toss it off oh sure oh, of that, course yeah that, that makes yeah. sense. I would imagine if you probably do that and toss it, um, it'll probably just go back to zero on the destination, I would think. Because mm -hmm. um, I think the whole gist of it is that you're meant to hang on to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so right. I, yeah, I'm, I think if you toss it, that would kind of lose that uh, urgency. I mean, exactly. it would essentially be the, the smart bomb from Star Fox, or very similar to true. it, if you threw it and it would explode away from you. So I think you could pretty much have to use it as intended by holding it up above your head. Yep, that makes com makes complete sense. I think so. All right, well, moving on to uh, day f uh, day four. There was nothing on day three, so we're skipping ahead here. Uh, Wednesday, <laughs> we th this is the this is the direct day. So this one's going to be a bit weird. <laughs> um, so there were multiple updates relating to the direct itself, as well as the reveal trailers for Simon Belmont and all the other characters there, as well as King K. Rool. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to just talk about the direct in general real quick before moving on to a little bit more specific information that was also updated throughout the day. So I guess now that we've had a few days to process the direct, how are you guys feeling about it? Because I feel like I was blown away by it, and my my feelings have only gone up since then, which is impressive. Usually, like you know, usually I start off high, then they drop a little bit. Uh, right now, I'm at the exact same level, if not if not higher, because. There is so much in this trailer that we just keep pulling out new information, and the information that was readily available is still exciting to me. So how are you guys feeling about all this? One, one thing I've noticed is the people that call this game a port have kind of disappeared after this Direct. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think the original E3 Direct um, sort of focused this being a big compilation of everything the series has ever been. Whereas this new one has set this as a brand new game. Like, mm. brand new characters, new stages, new modes, new content. It was just, this really was defining what Ultimate is, rather than just being a, a compilation title. So, a few days later, I am still buzzing off this. And um, some characters I didn't think would ever make it into Smash made it in. I mean, I thought K. Rool was good done with. You know, Nintendo haven't used him in a decade. And when they did use him, it was for spin-off titles. I didn't think he'd ever come back. But here he is, and I want him back even more now. I want him in the next <laughs> Donkey Kong Country game. Because mm -hmm. Tropical Freeze, as much as I love it, it didn't really have a defining villain. And I think that the next Donkey Kong Country game really does need K. Rool to come back. Um, so I hope K. Rool's here to stay, and I, enjoy, I I just love this Direct. Yeah, same here. I'm, I'm still, like you said, buzzing off of it days later. I think it's one of the best Directs they've really ever done, whether you know, game-focused or just general. It was just a really strong Direct, and there was so much revealed, and you could tell, like you said, yeah, it was more about defining what Ultimate really means, mm -hmm. like, as you said. At E3 was kind of just introducing the game. Everyone is here. That's you know the big deal about the characters. But then this this direct really went into detail about why this game is called Ultimate. You know, 800 plus music tracks, 103 stages, probably more. You know, five new characters. I think you know most of us. I wasn't here for the, for the uh, reveal or sorry for the uh, predictions. But I I thought that we'd maybe get like one newcomer and maybe one or two Echo Fighters. We ended up getting five new characters, you know, yeah. two newcomers and three Echo Fighters. And John pretty much called it, though, so he did, did predict he yeah, predicted he did. one new fighter, I, I believe, also, and a whole slew of Echoes. Nice. Yeah. I also predicted the time pretty much spot on. I think I said 27 minutes and 20 seconds, mm -hmm. and it was oh, very close to that. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. Well yeah, I, I yeah. predicted Simon and Dracula's Castle, but uh, certainly not more, not five characters. And just, yeah, the, just the content we got. Like, there's so much here, and it really did define exactly why this game is called Ultimate. And it's it was just a really, really well considered direct the way it was it was paced perfectly it was prepared really well just it was a really strong direct and i just c can't wait for the next one because we you know i assume there's got to be at least one more prior to release so. oh, at least yeah there'll be at least yeah. one more yeah. yeah yeah so it was great and also it teased um some 
um, questions that didn't have any answers. Like, we, we saw what we thought might be um, new modes, mm -hmm. but it, it wasn't exactly confirmed whether they were or not. And that's the best part about these card directs, is they add that speculation factor that keeps people excited even after they've aired. So pe today, people are still going, like, was that Monster Hunter stage an actual stage, or was it an adventure mode thing? Will there be a variation of it? We don't know yet. And that's, that's, that's very exciting. Because they just throw it in there without saying anything really about it. It's just uh, a background detail, literally. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much in agreement with you guys. It was a fantastic direct. Completely blew my expectations out of the water. I thought it was just going to be some minor, like, okay, here's a little bit more. But just the way they announce these things and the wonderful trailers they've been putting together. Like, they have, these have been, like, I think they've blown some of the... Uh, Wii U reveal trailers out of the water. I think so too. Just the quality. Uh, I I love what they've been doing with that. And as John mentioned, the speculation factor is off the charts. Not even not even for stuff that um like that we can see like the the Monster Hunter stage, for lack of a better term. Um, the fact that there has been a theme of villains so far. Like we've gotten a lot of villains in here, so it's led to a lot of people like wondering, well, what about this villain? Does this mean this character's going to get in? What about what about this whole uh, idea? And it's fun to see that kind of speculation to try to take these crumbs that Sakurai leaves behind and with these, these crumbs. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking crumbs. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just it, you know try to put it all together and combine it. So I'm like, okay, I'm 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 feeling this. I'm really. Uh, enjoying the speculation over uh, Ultimate, which a lot of times uh, Smash speculation can kind of annoy me because it's like uh, you're reaching, come on. But then, but a lot of the stuff for Ultimate is like, yeah, no, I can kind of see that. I can kind of actually see them go this direction. So I'm, I think I'm way more excited for this than I ever was for Wii U, and I was pretty excited for Wii U. I mean, it not being on Wii U is a pretty big factor. Let's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that yeah. helps too. And not have to, to split the content between the 3DS version and the Wii U version, which I hated. Right, right. They did such a great job with the Direct, how, again, they bookended it with amazing trailers. Or two new huge characters uh, was fantastic, and they were fantastic trailers. And I was thinking back to why... I might be why you and I, Derek, might be preferring these char these trailers versus the Wii U ones, and I think part of it is well, one, I think the characters I just like better in some cases, <laughs> but also sorry, Mega Man, <laughs> sorry Ash, <laughs> uh, but also the in, in a lot of the Wii U ones, it took place in that kind of generic valley setting, yeah. which was sure. weird. And here, uh, the two we've had so far have all been taking place in the characters' actual environment, which is just so much better because that's so much about what these characters are. Well, I think we also saw kind of a natural evolution in the style of the, of the trailers, even during the Wii U, Smash Wii U era. I, like, it's not just between the two games, but even toward the end of the Smash Wii U reveals, like Shulk and Duck Hunt, we would see that their trailers also didn't take place in that same valley that the earlier trailers, like Mega Man's, did. So I think mm -hmm. it was, it's just been in kind of an overall evolution of their style in general, and we're seeing that even more now mm -hmm. in Smash Ultimate. But no, I, I do like I do think that King K. Rule's trailer is one of the very best they've done yet. Of course, you know, I'm biased. Mega Man is still my dream character. That's probably always going to be my favorite trailer, just the way he stands against the moonlight and the hype was amazing. But King K. Rule's trailer with DDD trolling and just the the quality of the visuals. And same thing with Simon's trailer. Like, they're really, really, really well produced. And mm -hmm. I think these are the two of the best we've had yet, and I totally agree with you guys. They're just getting better and better. And uh, other than your dig at Mega Man, Andre, how dare you? And his is still the best. <laughs> but other than yeah. that, yes. No, King yeah. K. Rules was fantastic. And kind of going, uh, well, I think it was uh, what you were saying, Derek. I really want him back in the next Donkey Kong Country game now, <laughs> just after seeing that trailer. I already did, but I want him back even more now. Mm -hmm. I think the interesting thing between these two trailers is that Luigi was kind of the star of the the, the Castlevania reveal trailer. Yeah, like, very much yeah. so. Like, like yeah, you got some Simon and you got some uh, Richter in there. They did their things, but they didn't. They weren't really the focus. It was this element that like Castlevania itself terrorizing Luigi, which is great, which is really entertaining. But it's also why Luigi was trending higher than Simon or Richter. <laughs> but K. Rule's trailer stayed focused on K. Rule. And he was always sort of in the back of your mind with that trailer. And then he delivered and probably one of my favorite shot favorite shots ever in a in a yeah. smash trailer is that scene of him and DK running at each other. Yeah. Like the fantastic. intensity of that his, yeah. his thing it was like like these two powerhouse characters going at each other, it's like yes, yes, hell yes, do it. <laughs> yeah, 
one thing I, I love about the new characters is they feel like this one last effort to get the fan favourites into Smash. Ever since Melee, people have been like, we need K. Rool, we need Ridley. And every single iteration since, there's been, there's been that same fan base just rooting for these characters to get in. And they're finally here. And it feels like a triumph. Like it's, it's being celebrated by with these trailers, which are just so well produced. And actually, um, to go against what you guys are saying there about preferring the K. Rool trailer, I actually preferred Simon's trailer. Um, mm. I want I want Sakurai to direct a Castlevania game now. <laughs> yes. he's, he's perfecting yeah. the style. And uh, actually, also wants an M-rated Luigi's Mansion now after seeing that trailer. <laughs> I think that would be so right. Seriously. <laughs> like I said in that, I want, like, okay, not Luigi's Mansion. I want Luigi's Haunted Castle or something like that because yeah. that showed the potential of him just going through this huge, like... Make like make Luigi's Mansion more like a Castle uh, Metroidvania. No, like, I'd, I'd love awesome. that. Yeah, that, that was would be legit amazing. a great idea, and would be a, a a super unique setting for the series. So I'm all about that. And it, it is interesting too that they focus so much on the Polter Gust in the trailer, whereas he doesn't really use it that much in Smash Brothers. It's only his, it's only his final Smash. Although I do wonder if he'll have more prominence now, thanks to the um, new Final Smash meter you can toggle on or off. Uh, yeah. Because a lot of people, I think, just turn mm. off items, you know, just flatly turn on I- or turn off items, which means they never see Final Smash balls. But now this might uh, give them reason to see more Final Smashes. And, yeah. and we have, and did we? I don't even think we talked about Luigi's new Poltergust in the when we were doing our impressions from it directly after it. Um, right. And it's like that is weird, <laughs> like to see them actually create something brand new for Luigi. Luigi's Mansion Three, baby, it's, it's coming. Cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope so, so because that is a, it is a definite new design. It's not like I even went to uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon and like because I, I knew there was a super vacuum. I was like, did the design change? I'm not sure. And I've looked it up. It's like, no, it's still the same. So that is a completely new design. So I imagine yeah. um, the Luigi's Mansion remake on 3DS, that probably is, is it reusing the same design from the original game? I believe so. It is the original backpack, yeah. Okay. Okay. It's also interesting. Luigi's came. The, he's become the thing that he hates. He's become a ghost. So what's he gonna do now? Yeah. I mean, if you want a dark Luigi's mansion, you have one where he's hunting himself in the game. Oh my god! But, you know, kind of Death has killed board. all of Mar- uh, Luigi's friends, and he has to suck him back up and put him back in their bodies. Oh, exactly. <laughs> kind of going off of what you're saying about it feeling like that this is like a real last ditch effort to get you know characters that fans have really been wanting. That's true for the Echo Fighters as well, and I think the concept of Echo Fighters and the way they're kind of defining it has really been brilliant because I, you know, I, it makes sense to have Krom in, but I also didn't really think that they would do it. I kind of thought that Krom just had gotten passed over because he was too similar and that was going to be it, and fans were so upset that they didn't have Krom, and this is perfect. It makes so much sense to have him as an Echo of Roy, and just to use that excuse of having Echo Fighters to make Krom fans happy. And same thing with Dark Samus, like that's so on the nose, so many people specifically have been wanting Dark Samus, and here she is. Same thing with Krom. Like, it just seems like they are absolutely directly addressing what the, the, the characters that fans have been wanting to see, but both in terms of the uh, the ballot, the Smash ballot, and just in general, over the years, the, the repeated requests for certain characters. So, I think it's great that they're using Echo Fighters as a way to get to sneak some of these characters in. Like, Dark Samus, that's so cool. Well, the great thing about Krom is that his whole appearance was teased. He's like, next time. And <laughs> yeah. I think they're, the fact that they tease that they don't, like, Krom doesn't have a recovery like um, like Ike. And in this game, he has Ike's recovery. Right. I'd like them to define Echo characters a little bit more. Because Krom kind of confuses it. Because he yeah. is a Roy Echo fighter. But as you just said, his recovery is True. Ike's. So, uh, and every single time they talk about Echoes, they kind of say the characteristics are a bit different. Like with Simon and Richter, they say the animations uh, and taunts are different and the voice clips are different. But it seems like the moves are the same and the power behind them. Yeah, we've the seen only... with Prom, he has a different move, which is just very... That's, that's a new character, pretty much. Yeah, and that's, that, that's a good point. And plus the fact that I still don't understand, I mean, if that's all, all true, then why isn't Dr. Mario an Echo? Like, it, right. it, do, it does seem that there's a slightly vague... I don't think this really here. changes anything. I think as far as we've known, the basic properties of the characters are the same for Echo Fighters. They just have like a, few, a couple of minor tweaks, whether it's a new move or something else. Dr. Mario is a pretty different character when you break it down. Although his moves are superficially similar to Mario's, they have very different properties. His movement properties are different, I believe. Um, so I think that's the key distinction here. So even though 
uh, Krom has a move from a different character than his Echo, it doesn't change the fact that it, he's largely the same character, just with a different move to that character. Right, but but wouldn't it go to, and of course, we can't really say this for sure until we've played as these characters, but wouldn't it go to follow that a character like Dark Samus, she floats. She seems to have different movement properties than, than regular Samus. We don't, again, don't know that for sure until we play as her. And I see what you're saying. I mean, Dr. Mario, when you do break him down, has different properties from Mario. It just... The line seems a little blurry, but I, I mean, do see what I mean, you're it's saying. definitely blurry. I mean, that's whole. I mean, the whole thing is. I mean, they're just rebranding what was already there, which has worked out brilliantly <laughs> yeah. in their in their favor. <laughs> um, right. Now people, as John has said before, like people who detested uh, clone characters are now begging for for more echoes. <laughs> Give us clones. Yeah, exactly. And I do love clones. how Krom is technically an echo of a clone because you know Roy debuted <laughs> as Mark's clone, so he's like a second degree clone or something. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's good. Oh, and actually, going back to the direct for a second, I, I tweeted this out yesterday, but I love one of my favorite low key things of the entire direct that they announced was that was the super worthless, ultra granular option to choose how you display Echo Fighters mm-hmm. on the roster. That is the kind of thing that I love, and that I love that Sakurai cares about. And I'm definitely displaying all my characters separately. I want that roster oh, to be yeah, as big here. as possible. <laughs> but I just love that you're even you can even do that, and that's like exactly the kind of thing Sakurai would be like, oh, this is a worthless option, but let's just throw it in anyway. You know, now that you mention it, um, I, I do think also, like, I actually just wish Dr. Mario were an Echo character, so I could just turn them off on my main character screen without an option. <laughs> I don't know, I've got a thing about duplicate characters, like, if you're the same character, you shouldn't have two slots, and I feel the same way about uh, Samus uh-huh. and Zero Suit Samus, so... So you're gonna be, you're gonna be uh, organizing your roster to have them stacked then, right? Uh, I probably will. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah, I imagine I will. I can't say for sure, you know, until I try it. But yeah. no, you have to decide it's right now. <laughs> I, yeah. I like having Samus and Dark Samus separately because they are technically two different characters, and same with Peach and right. Daisy. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's when it comes when it's variations of the exact same character, though. I I completely get what you mean. <laughs> I, yeah. I think I, the only the only difference I would possibly be okay with. Oh, maybe not the only one. But one that it doesn't exist yet. But if there were like a Paper Mario, that's a pretty much a different Mario to the real Mario. So I oh, could man. see that being his own character slot. But yeah, in the sure. case of Dr. Mario, that is Mario with a doctor's outfit on. <laughs> Mario with a degree. I do like how Krom got kind of like this, got kind of a pass from the whole like another Fire Emblem character thing more than a new Fire Emblem character were. Like I think people would have been less excited for another new Fire Emblem character than they are Krom. And I love that he just got that pass because it's, <laughs> it's like, true. oh, another fire. I think it's like eight Fire Moon characters now. But, oh, it's Krom. Oh, yeah, Krom. Okay, that's cool then. Like, Krom <laughs> I mean, gets a I pass. love that. I love that little uh, clip in the in the direct where it's just all the Fire Emblem characters passing off this one character and just beating <laughs> yeah. the ever-living crap out of them. Like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I also love how these Echo Fighters have made people look a lot more closely, I mean, not even the Echo Fighters, just all the new fighters in general, look a lot more closely at the uh, me costumes from Wii U. Because, you know, K. Rule was one, Krom was one. Um, Gino. Uh, yeah, Gino <laughs> is one. That's what people are sort of looking at. There's a there's a lot of ones. But that also means, like, Tails characters were ones. Their uh, Tekken characters were me costumes. So what does that mean? <laughs> Could we see Heihachi in this, for example? I will say that I do think after after what we saw in the direct this week, I do think Shadow is a lock for a Sonic. Oh Echo. god! Oh, like, I think I that think is so absolutely too. a matter of time. And I also wonder, and this is just complete speculation, but we haven't seen the Elect Man trophy from Mega Man yet, or assist trophy. Elect Man was an assist trophy in uh, Smash Wii U, but at the same time, I don't necessarily think that means that we're going to see Elect Man as a Mega Man Echo because that wouldn't make any sense. Elect Man can't do the things Mega Man can, so mm. I don't I don't think it's going to happen. But at the same time. We got zero. Where's a leg man? Like, why would they take him out otherwise? So, just a, an idle observation. There are assist trophies we just haven't seen yet. Sure, um, that's at, also at true. At the moment, at the moment, we're at a total of seeing 39 assist trophies, and there were also 39 in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. So we've seen the exact amount as we're in that game. But obviously, because this is the ultimate version of Smash Bros, there are more to be seen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And obviously, we haven't seen, um, yeah, as you just said, we haven't seen um, a few other ones like that, too, that were in Smash for Wii U. So, yeah, I think there are still some to come back. Um, I was actually, actually I had a really bad thought yesterday, and I was thinking about more Donkey Kong Country raps, because I think Dixie is one that I really want to have in. Yes. But it would be difficult to make her an echo of mm-hmm. Diddy. Yeah, because she has very different properties with well, mostly her recovery. 
Um, and I was thinking, what, what else could they have as a Echo for a Donkey Kong character? And I thought, oh no, what if they made Kitty Kong a, <laughs> uh, an Echo of Donkey <laughs> Kong? Because there's no they, way they are really similar characters. They they could do they could do the exact same moves. And I John, would not buy the game. You are fired. You are you are out of here. My <laughs> We're allowed back. We're locking the gates. <laughs> Throwing um, away the key. There is no way because they would undo every bit of the goodwill they generated with <laughs> K. King K. Rule if they added Kitty and and Dixie was the only one left out. They would undo every bit of that goodwill. Uh, I would literally not no buy the way. game. That would be it. Yeah, oh my there's God. just. I, I'm still hoping that the way the uh, the direct ended, is, you know, with with uh, K. Rule like stomping Diddy and Dixie and their tra- uh, Diddy and DK and they're trapped. I do hope that that like is going to lead into Dixie coming and saving them. I really still want Dixie in this game. I know the chances are looking slimmer and slimmer. At the same time, we know we've seen that Sakurai is using Ultimate to directly respond to many, you know, the, the most persistent fan requests over the years, and Dixie has been one of them. She's been consistently one of the most requested characters, and so I'm hoping that maybe there's still a chance for her because I really would like to see her in this game, but. I do recognize that the chances are getting slimmer. I don't know if they are, because I think, uh, I actually do think she could appear as an Echo, because, yeah, she, her recovery would have to be quite different, but that's pretty much about it. Otherwise, she played identically, or mostly identically, to Diddy in uh, Donkey Kong Country 2, for instance. Um, yeah. So I think that could totally work. Yeah, she just, like, I think that the recovery yeah. would be the only big difference. She could use the pop gun, she could use the karate moves, bananas, whatever, you know, like, the stuff that Dixie do- that Diddy does. And it would still work. Yeah, her recovery is different, but we already have an arc for how that recovery would, you know, work. And, and thanks to um, Tropical Freeze. Yeah, just True. give her, her her ponytail helicopter thing, and like her peanut pop gun could change to like a bubblegum pop gun. They would or do the same gun. thing, just have different graphics. And I think it could work. Like, and, you know, and I know she doesn't have a tail like Diddy does, but instead of uh, his jab lock with his tail, she could have a ponytail, like a hair attack jab exactly. lock. Like, it could work. It could work. I do really want to see it happen. Do we know Diddy's final smash yet? Because um, that that wasn't very cinematic in Smash Brawl or Four. Yeah, I don't think we point. know it yet because he hasn't yeah, been playable. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm wondering like, if Dixie were in, it would have to be her guitar. It would have to be something to do with her guitar. <laughs> oh, That's absolutely. Yeah, it would Dixie. have to be. Yeah. They should bring in That'd the speaker, awesome. the huge speaker from Back to the Future, and have her just <laughs> play the guitar on that. <laughs> I'd be fine with it, just a sound wave around her that gets blasted. Yeah, out. exactly. <laughs> oh, like DK's old Final Smash, like the bongos. You just had well, not to even ruin like it. that. Just I just mean one big hit sending. Him <laughs> oh, out. just well, yeah, yeah. It would have to be like one. Back to the Future, like send Marty McFly flying not into the yet. wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, um, well, let's go ahead and move on here. And I don't know how much we'll have to say about this next update, uh, but they did announce that they um, updated the website as part of the whole direct announcement or reveal. Uh, the, Su- the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate website has been updated with more information about stages, items, and game modes. And sure enough, they weren't kidding. They added a ton of stuff to the website. <laughs> we were wondering when they were finally going to open up the stage section, and now we know why they held off, because they literally showed every stage we know about so far, being 103 of them on a giant table, and it is beautiful. I love that thing. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Like, John, you even used it in a couple of your videos, and it looks great in those. I mean, it almost looks like something professional we put together for the video. <laughs> they just easily <laughs> just record it and just select the stage you want to talk about. Yeah, it's super weird to look back at Smash 64, where we have, <laughs> what, like nine, nine stages? Nine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nine. And now we're at 103. Um, <laughs> but it, it is super weird, though, that two N64 stages haven't come back. It just feels weird to have all of them, but two. And yeah. these two aren't exactly ones that shouldn't come back. I mean, they're quite simple. It's, it's Sector Z, as I was, I was correct for saying <laughs> said. Um, Sector Z and uh, Planet Zebus, which, yeah, they have they have um, very similar stages from Melee with Corneria and uh, Brinstar. But they're, they're different enough, and it feels like just out of legacy that these should come back. Agreed, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think they should bring back as much as they can from the original game, which is pretty much everything. It's not that much. It's so close already. Just bring them back. Come on. Yeah, it's it's pretty similar already. I mean, it, it, the crazy thing is we knew about 85 stages before this, and then we got 18 more stages with this Direct. That's... Wow. By the way, <laughs> I, I just... A quick, a quick detail about the Direct itself. I love the way he presents his otherwise possibly boring information. In this case, they had a chart where it literally blows <laughs> to the top of the screen showing so how many stages. It's so great. I mean, the whole thing was basically just them. It was just a, a, them showing off. It yeah, was all it was. It was just them. Oh, yeah. And, and, and mean, he should. I mean, he deserves his victory lap after. I mean, he gives us every... He's spoiling us rotten. 
Mm-hmm. It's I ridiculous. mean, it's same for the like, his presentation of how many songs are in the game because <laughs> he's counting, 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 gets out to about 400, starts to slow down, then it speeds back up again all the way up to <laughs> 809, and then he's like, eh, but really with all the, like, if you don't count the repeats, about 900. <laughs> but I do love how it specifically slows down at, like, 481 because that's how many songs there were in Smash Wii U with the DLC added. So it specifically mm. slows down at a, at a number that is already crazy high, but it's specifically <laughs> how many songs were in Smash Wii U. And then you get, like, almost double that. Yeah, love it. Twenty-eight I, I hours. Cannot wait to hear this. That's now. Crazy. <laughs> Absolutely Ooh, I'm nuts. so ready for that. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of music, uh, the next update is music related. So I'm gonna throw it to you, Ash, for this one since you're the music guy here. All right. Well, yeah. This was the unfortunately this was the song that was uh, accidentally leaked <laughs> by Nintendo in advance of the direct the night before. But of course, it is the uh, mashup of Bloody Tears and Monster Dance from Castlevania, and this was done by Michiko Naruke, who uh, has worked on Smash before. She's done Brawl and Smash 4, and is also known for her work on the Wild Arms series, as well as Half Minute Hero, The Second Coming. And I realize that's not a huge game, but I just wanted to say the name of that game, because, I mean, <laughs> come on. Uh, but in terms of her previous uh, work on, on Smash, she was responsible for the Ocarina of Time medley and Sticker Brush Symphony remix in Brawl, as well as the, and for Smash 4, she did the Cutman stage from Mega Man 1 remix, as well as uh, the Full Steam Ahead from Zelda Spirit Tracks. So she's had a bit of a history in Smash, not a huge one, but it's nice to see her back because basically all of those arrangements uh, from prior Smash games I'm a big fan of, especially Sticker Brush Symphony. Like that yes. was one of the best ones mm-hmm. and one of the most popular, I think, among the fan base in general. I mean, well, so yeah, I mean, it, it helped back. that it was starting off on a high, on a, with a high, with a big bass of how popular that song was originally. But her right. remix of it was just brilliant, oh, so yeah. good. And so it's great same, to see her back. Same for Bloody Tears because yes. God, this is such a good remix. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, like Bloody Tears is one of the iconic um, uh, Castlevania songs. Like, there's a lot of really great Castlevania songs, and as we will see. But the two that everybody remembers were always Vampire Killer and Bloody Tears. And, oh, it's so good. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's great. so freaking good. And I do hope um, that because she mm. did the Cutman remix for Mega Man 1, clearly, you know, there's a pedigree there. So I'm hoping that we already know that Mega Man's getting some new music in Smash uh, Ultimate. So hopefully she's returning for one of those rearrangements. Somehow, after hearing this, I want to go back to play Castlevania 2. I haven't played Castlevania 2 <laughs> once, but it's maybe yeah, a little bit nostalgic it. for it. <laughs> I, I mean, it makes me want to go back. Like I put together that whole video showing where all the songs from Castlevania come from since they did reveal all 34 uh, in the, as, a, as a list. And I'm like, well, now I want to play the Castlevania series. Like, just go back and play the entire series because I own most of the games. It's like, yeah, I'm in a total Castlevania mood right now. Let's do this. If <laughs> so, I yeah. were Konami, uh, I would fast track a compilation of Castlevania yes. ASAP. Yeah. Get Run that down. out. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I've seen so many people like look at our analysis and be like, I've never played Castlevania before, but now you made me interested. Uh, right. Or look at the, listen to the music. Never Again, never played before, but damn, I want to play this song games after listening to this music. It's like, come I, on, I Konami. Think I, I think Andre even said that, like he wanted to go back and play Castlevania. I did. Um, I, I do, yeah, yeah. Exactly. This is the time. <laughs> put, put the compilation together right now. Please, yeah. Konami, come on. <laughs> yeah, it has to happen. Yeah. All right, well, speaking of Castlevania, let's just go ahead and move on to the final two updates of the week, uh, starting off with a character overview trailer for Simon. The new description reads, The protagonist of Castlevania, he uses his Holy Whip, Vampire Killer, to perform a smash attack with long reach. He also uses projectiles like an axe, holy water, and cross. So, again, um, I don't think we need to talk about the character overview specifically, but we can talk more about Simon, which we've already covered a fair amount already. (laughs) But uh, I watched your analysis this morning, Derek, finally had time to get around to it, and just really what stands out is the love and detail they're pouring into him, as as what they have with pretty much every character. Uh, Actually, there's one point I'll bring up, I'll bring it up in a little bit here. So, yeah, so how are you guys feeling about Simon right now? Simon reminds me a little bit of Mega Man, where they, um, his movement has the keyframes of the NES game. Yes! And the Mm keyframes are basically just like, what, uh, they they were quite limited in how many frames they could use on the NES, so it's basically just one or two frames to have a walk cycle. And both Mega Man and Simon have this very iconic stride to them. Mm -hmm. And it's replicated so well in Smash, and it's, it's actually quite impressive. Uh, just how well they've put this onto a 3D model, and it just it looks exactly like I envisioned Simon. Because when you look at the 8-bit yeah. sprites, he's just kind of a blocky thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> he, he looks how I pictured him, and it's just the perfect representation of Castlevania and of Simon. Even the jump, yes. how he tucks in his legs, is yeah, frame yeah. perfect. 
No, it's they like so they good. nailed his movement, and his animations, and, and yeah, like you said, John, just like Mega Man. And to draw another comparison, not a comparison to Mega Man, but in terms of Mega Man, I never thought that that dumb little whip flingy thing that he's got in Super Castlevania Four. <laughs> I never thought that that of all things would come back to haunt me in some future way in Smash. But it's very specific when they reveal Simon. You see that his whip flingy thing negates projectiles, and they use Mega Man as the example. <laughs> and it, it, they, it, as soon as I saw that, I'm yeah. like, "All right, new main." <laughs> I'm like, like, I got my oh, counterpick no. for Ash. Can whip so, thing be, a, be its official title? <laughs> I, I don't even know what to call it, but yeah, the whip flingy thing. But yeah, the <laughs> it, like the uh, it, it negates his metal blade, and I believe his pellets. I can't remember. Yeah, but, yeah, it does. I think his pellets. Yeah. Too. So that's the thing is that it, the fact that it works against his lemons. That's what scares me the most because his here, lemons are so good. That move is so defensive because in Richter's character trailer, they show him blocking one of Samus's missiles, like and taking no oh, damage. Damn. Like <laughs> right. that thing is a defensive wall. You can't move towards it, but if you want to, like, so you can't really attack with it. It's not really great for attacking unless somebody's really close. But the fact that you can block pretty much any projectile coming your way is really impressive. And oh, I'm, I I want to play with it so much. It looks so fun. Um, I love, like, I didn't even mention this during the analysis. I, I literally just thought about here, just thinking about animations and, like, his whip animations when he's in the air, those are totally out of Super Castlevania 4. Like, the, his, like, motions, like, the, 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 the distinct, distinct motions he does for each angle. Uh, it is, it really is, like, they took his model from Super Castlevania 4 and just HDified it. Like, here you go, <laughs> here he is, and it's, it's great. Um, and the, and I've, love how they mention like who's the echo fighter between simon and richter because simon does really pull from a lot of richter's uh special uh moves and whatnot like the item crash mm -hmm. the uh leap kick and the the twirl and all that stuff like it it really is sort of an even split between the two of them it's a chicken and the egg problem in smash brothers <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah but Simon's the more iconic character. So By far, I had no idea who Richter was. So. Yeah, R I saw Richter that as is a one of, is in some of the best uh, games of the series. But yeah, Simon is the poster child. <laughs> yeah, I watched like a few reaction videos, just like bits and parts of them, just you know for the characters and such. And like the vast majority of them were like, "Oh yeah, Simon." Oh, who's Richter? And then, and then they would, uh, then the, the reveal or the admission, like, oh, I never really played much Castlevania, would come, and and it was just across the board, very few people who knew who Richter was. But that's where the uh, the posers are exposed when they're exactly, super high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no yeah. idea who they're who they're hide for. You got to right. start playing Rondo of Blood, uh, uh, a um, uh, Dracula X uh, for SNES, or mm -hmm. come on, Symphony of the Night, exactly. <laughs> like that's 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 where the iconic lines come from. So one thing I've noticed about the third party characters uh, specifically is how they all seem to have at least some super unique attribute that only they have that they bring in just to represent that character. So Simon, of course, has the whip flingy thing. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ryu had the uh, had the actual Street Fighter button inputs. Um, Mega Man had like a gun as his primary attack, uh, which is something that I don't think existed before. Really. Excuse me, wait a minute. A buster, Andre, not a gun. <laughs> How dare you? My point was a generic term that anyone could potentially have, Ash. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and, and yeah, and that continues with Simon, as I, just, as I just said. So I am loving how they're bringing in these really unique gameplay mechanics that they haven't been able to do with any other character. And at this point, I'm almost finding the third party characters more exciting than the first party one. Like, I want to say more third-party characters here because they are doing such a great job capturing what made them unique and trying to fit them in with not, you know, in Smash among all the other Nintendo characters. Like, I am loving that. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, completely I, agree. I, be, I mean, Simon's essentially a bulky Conan the Barbarian-like character, and he right. still fits so well into this. He does. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on to the other big character reveal of the trailer. Uh, so we got another character overview again on Wednesday, the final update for the week. Uh, in which um, in which is for King K. Rule, and the new description reads, With long-distance special moves like the Blunderbuss and counter moves like Stomach Attack, he is a versatile fighter. His final smash, Blastomatic, was apparently a weapon created to, to destroy DK Island. So, obviously, this is the thing I was most hyped for in the Direct. I thought the reveal <laughs> for him was fantastic, is where he touched on. And breaking down his moveset, I am again impressed was just how uh, with how well they captured um, you know his appearances throughout the series, including what I found to be a pretty obscure reference to Donkey Kong Land, where he does a belly flop, um, and then also I like how the fact that they turned his um, his chest into an actual 
counter, seemingly by being body armor via the stomach attack, which apparently, if you look at uh, Stephen Mayo's Twitter, he confirmed that that was actually designed to be body armor. It wasn't originally his, um, wasn't just his chest, as it seems to be in more recent games. So it really does seem like they're reaching all over here to represent, um, to represent King K. Rool's various appearances, including even Donkey Kong 64, which is, you know, one of his lesser appreciated appearances, I think. But even what they're bringing in from that game, I'm, I'm loving here. Yeah, yeah they're, they're pulling quite greatly from uh, DK64, like with his boxing gloves, and his Final Smash recreates DK Island perfectly. Mm -hmm. We've not really seen this recreation since that game. It's, it's not been this quite, quite the same uh, envisionment of this. And it's just, it's crazy to see that come back of all things. Yeah! Um, and what I love too real quick is it almost acts as a sequel to the game over screen of Donkey Kong 64 because that game over screen cut off right when it was getting good. You never actually saw the destruction of DK Island, but we finally now get the payoff for it, 20 years later. Right. <laughs> One thing, um, K. Rool as a character, um, ever since Rare left, I was not a big fan of the redesign they gave him, um, where they basically took away his golden... Uh, stomach shield and made it into sort of like a, a flesh colored skin right and it, it's made it made him look more like a generic crocodile than this um intimidating villain and uh they, the design they've given him in smash is this brilliant culmination of both designs so it has it has the good bits of the redesign <laughs> which there aren't there many of but so it's, it's mostly the just design. a blue jam pretty much <laughs> pretty much yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean and not just that i mean also Speaking to your point, they also kind of removed the scales or toned down the scales in recent games, so he just looks like this green blob. <laughs> so yeah, right. again, they really yeah. did make him feel more animalistic in the recent game, to the extent now that he actually runs on all four legs, which he's never done before, and even and even caught his character designer, again, Steve Mayles, uh, by surprise. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, because yeah, if you think about it, like, look at his run animation from the original Donkey Kong Country, it's so it's dirty. goofy, it's so yeah. goofy, yeah. Like, you cannot take him seriously, I mean, it's sort of the point, you hit him and he's like looks at the camera like oof and then that's it mm -hmm. and there's just like this waddle the other side of the screen but i love I, it. it it's so like such a great combination of everything from across k rules history and i did i completely missed during the the reveal trailer that the blunderbuss can pull in enemies and items and stuff like that that's really cool secondary functionality for it mm-hmm it's also really nice to see that his recovery is the little copter when he, you know, from his K. Rulenstein appearance. Because I think that's, other than DK64, that's the appearance that most people tend to forget about the most because DKC3 is the most, you know, forgettable of the SNES trilogy. So it is really cool that they brought that specifically back, just as a little nod to his K. Rulenstein uh, incarnation. However, I will say there is one majorly missed opportunity with his moveset, and that's the fact that he never breaks into song like he does in the Donkey Kong Country cartoon. Oh my God. Like why why that would be perfect. Why doesn't he no it wouldn't be. But still like <laughs> uh, it, no but no in all seriousness it's it, he they really did a great job with his move set. I do love that his special specifically reference every game across the series mm -hmm. and all of his different appearances and it, it's just great. Well not not so, all his different appearances. He's not flying around on, on any Donkey Kong barrels in this. Well that's true. Yeah. All, of his, all of his main line appearances. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> So the, the funny thing is, they could, there's, there's a scene from the um, animated series that they could totally recreate where uh, <laughs> K. Rool is holding Diddy over a cliff and starts rapping about how <laughs> D Donkey Kong should hand over the crystal coconut. So you could have like <laughs> K. Rool grab Diddy next to the edge and DK on the other side and then just put the audio in. Somebody is going to do that. I oh, guarantee somebody it. will. Oh, it's so stupid, but... Um, <laughs> I, I, I love this like this interpretation of this character, and I love it's kind of cool how his crown can actually be stolen by the villager. Oh I, yeah, no, I, I love that, and how in the trailer he chases after him immediately after because if the villager steals your move, at least in Wii U, you can't use that move anymore. You have to until you <laughs> KO the villager. So right. yeah, that's kind of a, a potential danger if you're fighting a villager as King K. Rule. Oh, and by the way, speaking of that move, this is what I want to bring up earlier. Uh, it, I realized that King K. Rule and Simon have pretty much the same move with uh, the cross <laughs> and the and the crown. Aren't yeah, they basically uh, the same thing? Basically, yeah. they go out and come back, and I, like boomerangs. It looks like the crown can go through multiple uh, opponents as well. So yeah, the the cross and the uh, crown work in the same way. So there so you go. I, I wonder if Villager can also take the cross then in that case. Probably. I yeah. do. I would I think so. so. Yeah. Because, I mean, Villager can even take, like, Mega Man's charge shot, and that's not something he should be able to take <laughs> if he can pocket a charge shot. So I feel yeah. like he could probably 
pocket, yeah, like, like the cross or or I mean, maybe even the holy water. Like yeah, maybe the holy water and the axe. Yeah, I mean, like, probably probably villager all could them, just pocket honest. all the sub weapons coming from uh, Simon. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Any huh. final thoughts about King K. Rule at all, or I never I thought mean, he'd get in, but I'm so happy he is. Yeah, to yeah. echo that, uh, exactly the same. I, I, I lost all hope for K. Rool, uh, and reflecting on it, there isn't really another Donkey Kong Country villain that I think could ever take his place. No. N no. No one has come close to being as memorable as K. Rool. No, Not a I, single one. I, I totally agree. I, I mean, I would say Tropical Freeze's boss got closest, but I say that more as an extension of how the entire line of enemies came closer to the Kremlings we've had. Uh, in that I, I quite like the um, the snowmads. Snow mads. In but, general, yeah. Yeah, in general, yeah. But I, the boss of that game wasn't too memorable, and particularly because I actually thought he was going to be King K. Rool at first, because he's wearing the hood <laughs> and he's all mysterious to begin with. I'm like, oh, and he had a similar body build. I'm like, oh, this is going to be King K. Rool. It's going to be amazing. And it wasn't, and that disappointed me. Um, <laughs> so again, yeah, I am so stoked. Like, King K. Rool is a character I had also given up hope on. Um, the only slight disappointment is the fact that we can't make a Make the Case Now for King K. Rool. I would have loved to have done one I know. episode for it. So. <laughs> the funny thing is... Still is time for Gino. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, we need to do that soon. I, I love how he has his, his CG pose is um, basically like he's at court. <laughs> like, have you seen all the people like taking that render and like, uh, K. Rool going shopping? K. Rool yeah, the shopping uh, one Ace I retweeted. Attorney. It's so good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, if you like the Snowmads, Andre, maybe they'll do Lord Frederick as an echo for K. Rule. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, God. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. That wouldn't be so bad, actually. I mean, you can't really do his crown or anything. Actually, I guess you could. He has yeah. a... Um... Viking helmet. Exactly. Yeah, I guess I suppose you could. Yeah. You know there's maybe. someone out there, though. There's someone out there who's upset that, that K. Rule got in over Lord Frederick. You know there's someone. <laughs> <laughs> One person out there, at least, who's like, oh, man, Lord Frederick, why K. Rule? I don't care about this guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's someone true. like a big Lord Frederick, like, shrine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. I, I, I will say it's so nice to see them buff up the uh, villain roster for Ultimate. We got it two is. already. Two brand new villains. Two of the biggest villains across well, Nintendo and, history. And, um, and Dark Samus is technically a villain, too. You're right. Right? Yeah. Great yeah. point. Wow, this is almost like Smash Brothers, uh, yeah, villain edition, so... Well, and if you want to be super technical, Richter is like a villain for half of one of the games he's in. <laughs> so, you know, you got that too. <laughs> and, and Dracula, he's not a character, but he's in the game. <laughs> Good yeah. point. Great point. All right, so that brings us to the end of the week, or the end of the updates, as it were. But we're not done yet, because, of course, we have to answer one of your questions, where for just $1 a month, you can submit any one of your questions you have about Smash Brothers, and we'll choose one of them to answer every week. This week, our question comes to us from, uh, by way of Temple of Games, who asks, Been a fan since the days of the previous Smash Weekly discussions, and I want to say you guys are awesome with these. Since we had an amazing direct, I have a question revolving around hype. How would you compare this hype cycle of Smash compared to the other games in the series? I was pretty hyped for Smash 4, but I gotta say, I feel like Ultimate is living up to its name, because because even the hype is ultimate. Thanks for taking the time to read this and have a smashing good day. And I think Temple <laughs> of Games is onto something here. Um, I was hyped for Wii U, but I am feeling it a little bit more now, and I think uh, I think it's for a few different reasons, for me. I think one, again, it's on a platform people care about now, so the hype seems to be broader than it was with Wii U. In fact, it's coming pretty early or earlier in a system's life cycle is, is contributing to it, I think. And also the fact that um, it's condensed. We only found out about this game a few months ago, and it's coming out in a few months. So the fact that it's on a condensed cycle is just smashing in, so to speak, all this hype <laughs> into a really small window. So I think all these factors combined um, are really contributing to this, to this. But what do you guys think about uh, the hype cycle? I think that's the key factor, the, the the condensing part. Like I think I think the overall level of hype is similar, but the fact that it's so much more condensed makes it feel a lot more intense, you know, in, in a shorter period of time. And of course, I'm biased. Of course, you know, the, the my hype for Mega Man was just over the moon and, and probably will still uh, it wasn't be it in more. front of the moon? It was in front of the moon, actually. <laughs> so I mean, you know, really there's only one character they could they could still introduce at this point that would get me anywhere close to as hype as I was for Mega Man. And I don't know if they'll introduce that character. That character They already Sora. announced we'll King see. K rule. We just talked know, about right? it. <laughs> <laughs> well for me that character is Sora and I don't know if that's gonna happen. It might. I'm I think that there's a chance but you know for me i'm biased because mega man was in smash 4 and that was just the ultimate hype for me but no pun not intended however <laughs> i think that because the the hype cycle at this time is just so truncated and it's so much more condensed it makes it feel intense in a different way and you know despite you know mega man or not it's it's definitely a really really high level of hype that's just being maintained all the way to release and i just think the difference with smash 4 is that it was more of a drip feed and that can be an exciting in its own way, but it's also really cool to have these massive information dumps and the knowledge that we're gonna know every character 
before launch. Like the soccer guys already said, we're gonna introduce every fighter before launch. So it's it's a different hype cycle, but it's more truncated and condensed, but I think that makes it exciting in a different way, and I, I'm loving it. Reflecting on Smash 4's roster, I think all the big w, uh, WTF characters were the DLC characters. Obviously Mega Man's huge, but a lot of the other ones weren't quite so much. I mean, Shulk meant a lot to me, but he's not a huge icon. And mm -hmm. when you look at K. Rool and Ridley, those are, uh, those are characters that people have wanted in since the beginning. And even Inkling is one of Nintendo's biggest IPs at the moment, Splatoon, I mean. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I just think the characters they put into this game are far more impactful than the base roster of Smash 4, even when there's fewer sure. of them. That's a great point. Um, we Fit Trainer doesn't quite bring the hype like Simon <laughs> Delmar does. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, I, I love the duck, I love duck Hunt. I guarantee I was probably one of the few who was super excited for that. <laughs> it's like, really? This damn dog is in the game? <laughs> Well, and even with Mega Man 2, I mean, it's as it's, it's hype as he was, he wasn't exactly WTF or surprising. He was the second most requested character behind Sonic, like, over the years. So it's not, and everyone knew that he was, like, you know, he was so appropriate for Smash. I mean, he's Mega Man. So he wasn't a WTF character in the way that, like you said, John Cloud. Like, that was the ultimate WTF character, I think. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, I mean, you got Mega Man, and it's awesome that he's in the base roster, but he wasn't, like, oh, my God, crazy surprising in hindsight. Mm -hmm. uh, it's. I mean, I'm pretty much just echo you guys. I guess I'll just be the echo of this uh, <laughs> roster. <laughs> um, no, it, it, that truncated hype cycle is, I think, the key reason. I think we all feel it because we've only gotten two real presentations of Smash Brothers information, and both of them, both of them, have been stuffed to the gills with new information and things to get excited about, and it just keeps the momentum going and yeah we have the smash blog but a lot of the times the smash blog is just focusing on stuff we've already known there's stuff that we've uh, they've already shown we get new music tracks each week and that is fantastic but i i think the individual daily updates i, I can't tell if they're as good as or uh better or not as uh, how they compare to the smash wii u hype cycle because here we're getting specific information with wii u it's like well here's this me verse post of this funny thing and you're kind of getting a new information, so mm -hmm. it's been it's been a while. Yeah, it's it's tough to compare because the first six months of the Wii U um, Miiverse updates, they had nothing. There was nothing there. Yeah. But then when we started covering them, uh, because they started releasing new information, that's when it started to get good. We actually got new legit information from those updates quite often, like even stage reveals. Uh, which we haven't got anything quite of that level here yet. We're getting some mm -hmm. awesome music updates. Uh, so I'm hoping there's there will be some announcements here, but they may just be taking a totally different angle here and just announce everything in directs. I will say that I do kind of prefer the drip feed angle in some ways. Like, I did really enjoy learning about new stages bit by bit. Like, you know, we, we'd get, we would get an update about the Paper Mario stage, and another update would be about Pac Maze, and... I, I just kind of, I don't know, I do like that drip feed of information where you just get that one little surprise every, you know, every so often, every few days, every couple of weeks, you know, you never know what update's going to be, kind of a, you know, nothing update, like a really minor item, and you, but at the same time, you don't know when you're just going to get randomly a, a character or a stage, and I do kind of miss that drip feed style, but at the same time, it's, I can't say it's objectively better or worse, it's just a different approach, and it is really cool to have these massive information dumps, too, at the same time. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I, I often forget how exciting Brawl Smash Dojo could be. Oh, um, yeah. There were there were some bummer <laughs> announcements. Like some days you'd you'd um, you'd check the site, like you're refreshing the page, waiting for the update, and it would just be something like, "Oh, here's how you recover," and uh, you don't want to see that. <laughs> but then other Here, days, here's what you, you widescreen is like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it was "You must recover" was one of the updates, <laughs> and it was like yeah, what? exactly. Yeah. But then other days you log on and Sonic, like all of a sudden out of nowhere, <laughs> just Sonic is in the game. It's like whoa. So there was, there was actually more of an incentive to check the dojo than That's I think true. there is to check the blog at the moment. Because the blog's just kind of showing us stuff that we already know of, apart from um, the odd music track every now and then. So I think in that sense, um, the dojo was more gripping, but um, I much prefer what we have now. I much prefer just having these big directs that just give us this huge blow of information. I think that's more my style. Yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. as, as you guys have said also, the accelerated process of this um, this release is just it's just like we're always getting something and that's something that we didn't always have with Brawl because uh, sometimes we had those, those those lesser updates which just really weren't really worth our time <laughs> you're right yeah <laughs> yeah it's um you're bringing yeah I, I kind of forgot to even think of the uh, the Brawl um, 
uh, the Brawl updates because I also remember loving reading those every day because, yeah, there would be some great, huge information on them. Yeah. Um, but that was t over 10 years ago now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, things have changed. And so, yeah, it's weird. But I prefer, I, I like both for different ways. I do, you know, the drip feed is nice in that you're getting that kind of like constant high, right? <laughs> but none of them ever reach the level that say this last direct did I think we're just blowing all this new information right into your face <laughs> um, <laughs> and like that King the King K rule trailer like the way they even played off your emotions was just fantastic something that a blog entry could never quite capture uh, so yeah I mean I like both are different for different reasons um, well I like all three for different reasons I suppose uh, but I think right now I am quite liking how they're doing how they're handling Smash Ultimate uh, especially because again it's on a condensed timetable so the fact we don't have like new stuff every day it's kind of okay because we're still getting pretty big pieces of information um, on you know with with not too long a stretch of the time between them although we say that but now after this direct the I, I, I'm predicting that the next Smash Direct will probably be time for October because that's like perfectly halfway between now and release but even that like a two month wait after this direct feels like an eternity to wait. I need more I know I need more <laughs> right in my veins <clears throat> All I want now is on an October Direct with a Castlevania collection announced for Halloween. That's yes. all I want. Oh, <laughs> that, that would be perfect. There that we go. That would be pretty great, yeah. I mean, the other thing you can tie into Halloween is if this is, like, if Rathalos and uh, Dracula are part of some sort of boss rush, imagine all the bosses they could, like, the boss lineup they could put into this game. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And not have to worry about original subspace emissary type bosses. Just get us all that, that good stuff. It's like, yeah. here, have, uh, I was thinking Death Egg Robot from Sonic. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. When, and not to mention, if, if that blurred out gameplay mode that we don't know what it is yet, if it actually is spirits, that would be an easy tie-in to the whole Halloween theme. <laughs> You're yeah, right. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, Luigi gets to fight King Boo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that about wraps it up. So thanks for the question, Temple of Games. And the game, if you want to submit a question of your own, just back us for $1 a month on Patreon, uh, where you can uh, where you can submit your own questions, as well as get the podcast three days early, as well as exclusive access to our VIP room on our Discord. And with that, that brings us to the end of the week. So thank you so much for watching. And, of course, stay tuned for next week, and we'll discuss even more from the Smash Brothers blog. All right, guys. Catch you later. Bye. <laughs>